Welcome back to the Piney Woods Homestead, y'all. I know that I may have promised on the last video that you'd be seeing the project that we've been working on pretty hard for several weeks to get ready for the homestead here. But guys, we're not quite ready for it. So, we're going to sawmill today, and hopefully in the next few videos, we'll reveal what we've been working so hard on. Be patient with us, guys. We appreciate that. Hit the old like and subscribe if you haven't, and if you have, as always, we appreciate you. And if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. You get to see some good, honest, hard work, country living, what real homesteading and living off your little piece of land really is. All right, guys, let's get to throwing some sawdust. It's got a pretty good bow in it. It's gonna be live edge siding for that off grid cabin, y'all. I need about three to four more logs worth milled for that project and then flooring and whatnot. But it's got a good bow in it, so I wanted to make sure I got that bow. So I got I'm kind of wanting that bow for this side, and it'll look pretty cool. So let me uh, let me get her clamped down and fire up this Subaru. It's probably the only Subaru I'll ever drive, believe it or not. Here is a race against the clock. Do you feel that way? It does, y'all. It takes a whole lot longer to get projects accomplished than you realize when it's just really two of you working. So I guess I need to quit running my mouth and get to milling. side of camp going on here one live edge time to set the mill at one inches see how many boards I can get
right, y'all, out of that 10 and a half foot yellow pine, I got six one inch live edge siding boards, a half inch trim board, and a two by eight that I'm gonna use down here at the hog lot at the Farrowin barn. Gotta do some work down there. Before hopefully Dixie has her litter of pigs July 29th, that's the due date. Oh, and I got one fire ant sting on the back of my neck. They, they live out here in the sawdust, y'all. But let's talk about small sawmill. Can you make any real money with it? All right, we'll take a break here on the tractor. We're gonna talk about making money with a small sawmill. And the sawmill that I have that my dad gave me several years ago is not the smallest sawmill out there. You can get some of these 12 foot tracks, small saw heads with I think probably nine horsepower engine. This one has a track extension on it. I can mill up to a 16 and a half foot log, 30 inches in width, roundabout. A little bit less, to be honest. It's got a 14 horsepower Subaru on it and 19 inch steel band wheels with 154 inch blade, I believe is what it is. You can mill as fast as a sharp blade will cut. It's 100% manual. When I first started looking at mills, I looked at wood miser, timbery, woodland mills, you name it, years ago, y'all. And I actually had put down a deposit on a timbery, which was a manual mill, but it was more expensive than this easy boardwalk. But honestly, it was not as heavy duty. Even though it was a brand new mill, it was nice. I ended up getting my deposit back on that when my dad said, I want to gift you with my mill. This mill will cut just as fast as the blade is sharp, depending on the species of wood. It's got an offset head, which makes it cut a little bit quicker because it actually pulls the mill head through the cut. So it's really, really nice. It's got a really nice four inch channel frame. It's heavy duty, y'all. But there is absolutely nothing hydraulic on it. So if you're wanting to mill lumber with one of these manual mills, there are gonna be some logs you just can't do unless you have an excavator like we do to pick these things up and reposition them or a tractor with a front end loader or a boom pole or something to be able to manage your logs or some kind of aftermarket homemade deal to turn logs, things like that. So think of these things before purchasing a mill. If you're just a homeowner, a weekend warrior, don't go spend $60,000 on a hydraulic mill it, unless that is your bass boat, your camper, and your four-wheeler all combined in your new truck um, because you're never going to make your money back with it because you're a weekend warrior. And, and that's not a bad thing, y'all. Get you a smaller mill. Use your mill for your own project. Sell a few boards here and there to your buddies. But one thing I have found as this is part of our business, milling. We mill by the hour for people that bring their logs to us. And Lisa helps me when I do that, offloading, stacking, stickering, all that sort of thing. And I have enough experience with the mill several years that I'm efficient with it. I know when a blade needs to be changed. That way the customer's getting the most bang for their buck. I know how to maximize a log so there's not a lot of waste in slabs going onto the pile. That way they're getting the most out of what they bring. But I mill by the hour and what you're going to find if you decide you want to do this for your living like we're doing is, you know, we run heavy equipment when we can get to work, uh, excavator jobs, driveways, small pads, small clearing projects, things of that nature, y'all. It's an 8,000 pound excavator. You've seen it on the channel. You can do a lot with it if you know what you're doing. We also mill lumber. 
we don't mill our own timber and sell it. I've done that some in the past, but y'all, with just under 20 acres here, you think you got tons of timber, but when you start felling it and milling it for your own projects, you realize just how much timber it really takes. So y'all, I no longer, except on extremely rare occasion, if it's a family member or a really close friend, cut down our own, man, that fire ain't got me good, cut down our own timber and mill it to sell because once it's gone, I can't get it back. Sure, I get a little bit of cash, but that's gone pretty quick too. And I'd rather have the timber for projects because if the Lord allows and I live a long time, there's a lot of building projects that Lisa and I want to do, expanding our homestead operation. So let me try to get back to what I'm talking about, making money with a sawmill. If you're doing it like we are as part of your business, you're going to find that there are plenty of folks around that are weekend warriors that have a meal and are selling lumber, let's just say yellow pine, depending on where you're at, we're in North Carolina. Some of them I have seen selling it for less than a dollar a board foot. Let's say that's their timber. Well, unless they got a hundred acres of it, it's not going to go very far if they're like us on a small track under 20 acres. By the time you factor in the wear and tear on your machine, the fuel it takes to run it, the upkeep on a tractor that we use, an excavator that we use to sort logs or to go acquire those logs from a clearing project, less than a dollar a board foot ain't gonna make no biscuits for the supper table with that y'all and you're gonna end up with a meal in a few years that needs an engine replaced bands replaced the neoprene i'm not sure if they're neoprene i can't remember what they are they're high dollar they're a, a rubber composite that goes on the band wheels on this mill they're expensive my dad replaced them bearings that are going to go out all kinds of upkeep y'all so when you when you price this kind of work, you've got to keep in mind in the future, the repairs you're going to have. It's nice to get a quick buck so that you can make your four-wheeler payment or take your family to the beach for the week. But sooner or later, that nine or $10,000 or $3,000, whatever the meal costs that you buy, is going to wear out and you're going to have to replace it and that selling that lumber for less than it's worth is just going to hurt you in the long run so do not think you can buy a meal go into business sell it for what a big box store or a big lumber lumber yard is going to sell it for and make a living it's, it's not going to happen you're going to go broke real fast now that being said that's why we work by the hour we know what it's worth we tell folks what it is and no i'm not going to tell you right here on youtube um, if you're local you can send me a phone call or an email what have you and we'll give you a price but you've got to replace equipment as it wears out you figure this tractor right here we could have bought a hydraulic mill to do all the hydraulic things that are needed but that's the only thing i could use it for so the tractor we bought several years ago because we use it gardening, bush hogging, moving logs around, grading, all kinds of stuff, y'all. So it's more bang for the buck. Instead of spending 60 on a hydraulic mill or whatever they are, spend whatever a tractor costs with a front end loader and get you a manual mill. And now you have two avenues to make an extra dollar, whether it's box blading somebody's driveway or milling their logs. So you got to think, kind of diversify, and unless you are wealthy, have come into money somehow, working like this, I don't think you're ever going to get wealthy doing it. And that's not why we do it. We just do it because this is a lifestyle that we enjoy. No day feels like work, even when it's hot and miserable. Now, it feels like work when there's more month than there is money. That feels like work but that's where you just keep on trucking and making smart 
decisions on what you sell your lumber for, what you're willing to work for, and not giving stuff away, no more than you can afford to. One more point to make y'all, if you're trying to do this for a living, on a small scale, don't think you can compete with the big box stores. You can't do it. The only time that uh, in the recent past that we could is when prices went crazy. But lumber prices are coming back down now. And so what seemed like a great deal from somebody like us back during that crazy price hike, now folks are like, that's not a good deal anymore. So, but still you can't sell it for any cheaper. So I'd rather sell less, get what it's worth, than sell a whole bunch of it, wear myself and the equipment out, and not be able to afford to replace it one day. So can you make a living with it? Can you make any money with it? Sure you can, or we wouldn't be doing it. It's not just for our homestead projects, y'all. This helps supplement our diverse business model. Firewood, saw milling for folks, excavation work, tractor work everything goes in hand in hand when you are working for yourself and there's a whole lot of freedom in working for yourself y'all the only boot on your neck is tax man <laughs> which is bad enough that's really it y'all and it's just how hard are you willing to work are you able to get the work and there's going to be times when it's feast or famine you got to roll with it, y'all. It's just part of it. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching today's video. Just a little bit of sawmill truth to you there. Y'all have a good day, a great week. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise too high. We'll see you on the next one.